don't know how the hair situation is looking, but we're just, we're gonna roll with it. Okay. Hi, it's the girl with blue eyeshadow, also known as Liz. I decided I was gonna do a faves, like a favorites and fails video. I've been like, I've filmed them in the past and then I scratched it. I haven't been here for a while, so, but I was inspired by, what's her name? Shane Spear on YouTube. I don't think she really does mm, YouTube videos, but she, or not YouTube, uh, beauty videos. She does like commentary. She's really cool. Check her out. She did a favorites video. I was like, I want to do a favorites video. Cause that's what I, cause I've been just like all over the place. I feel like, and I feel like I, I really want to do this. This got me into it, you know? So that's something interesting. Keep on watching. So first for favorites, we will start off. I like spent like a good 20, not 20, like five minutes trying to figure out when I do a favorites, do I start with the positives or start with the negatives? We're gonna start positive and then hopefully by the negatives, maybe I'll get a little ranty, it'll get interesting. So this is like a mixture of stuff. We have some books, we have some music. Um, so for, we'll start with like beauty. I have this Becca Light Shifter Dewy Tint in the shade 2.5. Ooh, look at me. Um, I got this on sale on Becca's website. When this first came out, I was kind of interested in it actually, but I didn't get it because I talked myself out of it. But then I found that Becca was having a sale, they're having free shipping, and I got this down to $10 with like coupons and stuff. Um, and I think for $10, it's pretty nice. It doesn't give you a lot of coverage like at all. Like I'm pretty much just putting a glowy thing on top of my skin. The color is okay, but I think that because it's so sheer, it doesn't matter. Uh, very glowy, like I said. I've been really liking to mix it with things. Like I have this mixed with my Rare Beauty foundation and now that it's summer, my Rare Beauty foundation actually kind of matches me a little better. And when I mix it in with this, which is like glowy and stuff, and like I have like a dewy base, so either with my sunscreen or with like a primer, this is really nice. So I think if you could get this for like 10 bucks, I think you wouldn't be that mad about it. I know it's like annoying because then you can't get it back because they're going out of business. But like, I did pick it up. It's ten bucks usually. Um, I would get it off Becca's website because I think they have the better sales and better coupons. Like use Honey or Karma or what else is there? Rakuten. I don't know if Rakuten had any coupons, but yeah, it's kind of a nice, cute little pick. They're having free shipping. I love free shipping. I don't know if I've mentioned this one, but this is the Pat McGrath uh, Mothership palette. I think it's their fifth. Yeah, five. Midnight Sun. I'll show you. Um, this was like on sale for like pretty cheap on her website. And then I think there was also a coupon and they also have either Affirm or Karma or one of those like pay it, pay it later type of deals. And I was like, I'm gonna pick it up. And I don't regret it. I thought I like, if I got it and I was like, am I gonna feel bad about this? I don't regret it. Um, I think they're, it's beautiful. I genuinely think this is beautiful. Um, I love these shimmers. I feel like, did I talk about this? If I've talked about this, I'm sorry, but this is this is nice. I like these shimmers. These two are my favorite. This like, like the fun thing about these shimmers is that you just dip and it's just beautiful. Hold on, I'll swatch for you. I'll swatch, whoops. Can we swatch? Can, can I use my arm? Like I know, I don't know if you can see that, like the, it just is so pretty. I love it. Um, the blue is not like a blue blue, like my favorite kind of blue, which is like a sapphire blue. I feel like my favorite blue is like a black based blue, if that makes sense. But I still like this blue. I feel like it's a nice kind of like everyday kind of blue. I will go in with like these neutrals right here. I know people say Pat McGrath, you don't buy Pat McGrath for the mattes. I like these mattes. These mattes are just so fun to play with. Um, no, not fun to play with, but easy to play with. You know what I'm saying? Cause I have a couple palettes where I'm like, I gotta use like when you go into a dark, like a dark matte, you know? And it's like, like say a prayer, like let me try to blend this out. And for this one, and I forgot to get the other one out. That's another good example of like a good matte. Um, the Kaleidos mattes are also really good. Like they're deeper mattes, like the one Angie did. Angie did that with that mattes. Those mattes are good. Um, I'll put a picture if I, cause I don't want to reach in over there. Um, but yeah, I really love these mattes. I love that there's like these two neutrals right here. Um, I like these, these two as well. These are also really nice. This green is really pretty. I just love playing with this. I have to like stop myself cause like I will use that blue every single day. Like I have to like get myself to diversify 
thing or something. You know what I'm saying. Next up, we also have, I got picked up the Temptalia and Sydney Grace palette. I think this is like 36, so it's not that expensive. Like, you know, it's still like, kind of, it's like, a, how much would this be? This would be like an Anastasia palette like price wise. So it didn't think it was terribly priced. And I know Sydney Grace has like great shadows, but I wanted to try them. And I really liked, oh, can you, am I gonna blind you? Can you see this? I don't know. Maybe I'll post a clip, who knows. But I just loved it. this palette. This one in Quintessence is another one. And then there's like another one on the horizon. This is Radiant Reflection. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, this one she described as like a jewel toned um, rainbow palette. And I love that about it. I love this purple. This purple makes up for the one Pat McGrath purple I'm a little disappointed in. This is beautiful. I currently have, I don't know if you can tell, the golden shade. What is the golden shade called again? Exquisite Opulence. Beautiful. I love this Jealousy's Descent. That is beautiful. Our Starry Night. Gloss Over. Even like, like, these are not necessarily all my colors. Like, I love them. I like them. But like, I don't usually go for colors like this what sold me was this but I was like these are nice like especially I don't know what that's called Phos phosphysis Phos I don't know this one right here it's a little more taupey that one's beautiful it's just a really pretty palette um I was like tied between this one and quintessence that has more like cooler silvery tones and I ended up going with this one because I just love a good rainbow colorful that's my thing you know um so yeah if you can pick this I think this is like they did a good job of like stocking this up so you can get this it also comes in like a light this is the light version there's also a dark version if you have darker skin any better transition shades um i think you should this is nice this is cute i love it i've been having to like force myself to use other palettes because i would just use those shimmers because they're beautiful some people were saying that they can't tell the different color stories between that i kind of disagree like i think you can figure it out like I could tell for On the Horizon, it was a little more green and a little bit more neutrally out of the three. So I was like, no, Quintessence had like more cooler shades and like purples and less green and less um, blues. Well, this one had more blues and jewel tones. So I think you can tell the difference between them. I don't know if I'd recommend getting all three of them. I probably wouldn't recommend getting all six, um, but I would just maybe pick your favorite and go with that one. And I think you'll be pretty happy with your choice. We got lip products. Uh, we'll go with a higher end lip product. I didn't realize I've used quite a bit of this. This is, mm, can you see? The Tower 28 Lip Jelly. This is from their like travel size they had during um, Christmas in Fire. I remember trying this and not liking it, but I have been really, I took a break from XOXO, which is what I had kind of, here I'll try it on, in my pan series. Or I was trying to finish that one up that and this ColourPop one that I have that I'm getting kind of sick of. Um, so I threw this in there just for some variety. Um, and I really like this. I'm also kind of running out of it. I don't know if I would buy the full size. I do have the full size of, what is it called? This one, like the Fearless, this is this one. This is like my favorite one. And I always thought I'd get XOXO as another full size, but I might get this one. This is kind of nice, cute. Another lip gloss is this e.l.f. Jelly Bomb, Jelly Pop Juicy Gloss. I've had another one of their Juicy Glosses, but I lost it. This is from their like watermelon, is it the watermelon one? Yes, it's the watermelon collection, I guess. And then they, I guess, brought it back. I don't know if it really left. Um, and I picked this up. I really like these e.l.f. lip glosses, the ones that are like this. I don't like the ones that have the wand and the tube. I prefer the ones that are like this type of packaging. That's just me. This is in Watermelon Pop, and I think it's like a just, ooh, can I talk? It's like a really cute, like, berry, pinky shade on the lips. And I feel like it does, like, what I like in the lip gloss is I like it to be slightly, not, I don't want a plumping. We're going to get to a plumping one later. But I like it so the lines on my lips aren't as prominent, if that makes sense. So, like, slight, like, a plumping look. It doesn't need to be plumping. A plumping look. Okay. What do we have? What do we have? What do we have? I don't want to go too long. Oh, for skincare, I have two things. I've been trying out this pimple paste by, what is this called? In Beauty Lab, I think is what it's called. Yeah, In Beauty Lab, two ends. Um, I was attracted to this because it has, it sticks to your skin, it won't move around. I have like a dupe to the 
Mario Badescu, like the pink one where you dip and then you put it on and it dries it out. For both of these, I don't know how well it actually dries out the pimple. I do kind of like this because it won't rub off on my pillowcase because I tend to sleep on my side or on my stomach and it tends to get all over the place. So I don't know how well the ones that I for that works, the ones where you're dipping and putting it on because they end up wearing off. This one you have to like wash off the next morning because it like dries up. Again, I don't know how much it like sucks out the um, pimple. I do like it though, just because it does stick on my face. I don't think you get a bunch of product for it and I will warn you, it does have a smell. <laughs> like I usually try to apply this with a Q-tip instead of my finger just so I don't have the, the smell on my finger. Um, it has, what does it have? Willow bark, sulfur, tea tree, uh, salic acid, and thyme. Um, that's why I think it has this kind of funky smell. But if you're looking for something, I don't think this is like too expensive and you can get it on Sephora. Sephora's having free shipping still, so this is cute. I like it. What else do we have? Okay, we have this Tarte, Tarte C Set and Protect Mineral Powder Sunscreen Broad spectrum SPF of 30. This is like in a little wand and you put it down, you click it, and then you like, in theory, I don't know how much this is actually working for, hold on, let me explain. I got this to reapply sunscreen because I know you're supposed to reapply every certain amount of hours or if you've been out in the sun, you should probably reapply, yada dee, yada da. I don't usually reapply because I have makeup on. So I've been trying to find things to reapply with I've tried the like sponge method where you put your makeup on a dry sponge or no, you put the sunscreen on a dry sponge and then pat it on your face over your makeup. I find that removes makeup like mm, I don't find that works really well. So I've been trying to find like ways to do that. I've been trying to find sprays. I haven't had much luck with sprays. I do have one that I'm going to talk about this in the other category, but I think this is kind of neat. I don't know how much it's actually working. That's the thing about it. Like, I don't know if it's applying the right amount, things like that. But I think it's nice to have on the go. This only comes, this is supposedly translucent. I don't know if I, I buy that. Um, but if you want one for darker skin, I think Super Goop has a version that comes in three shades and it's $2 more. So this was like 28, but then I got it on Tarte's website. I used a bunch of coupons. I got it for like 22. I feel like I could be wrong on that. And the super group one is 30 so it's like mm, not a great deal but if you have maybe skin like mine you might be able to get away with this or you might just want to try it go through the tart website tart usually has free shipping too if not maybe try the goop one i haven't tried the net goop super goop maybe try that go quick with this one this is the super dough super dough classic sugar paste it's a wax but it's sugaring i don't know if you've ever heard the difference they're sugaring, it's slightly different than wax. Wax will cling on to skin, sugaring supposedly doesn't and it's supposed to make it less painful. I saw this like on an Instagram, not Instagram, TikTok. Someone talked about it and we're like, go check out this sugaring company. I was like, okay. And I kind of just bought this like without even thinking, like I liked how she was sugaring, it looked fun. Um, so I picked this up. Uh, I've been liking it personally, I, it's like, I don't think it's for everyone because it does have a learning curve. Um, I've, I'm someone who has a very difficult time with shaving my legs. They're never done. I've tried Nair. I've tried waxing with just like strips. I've never done professional waxing. I've done waxing with strips and while it gives me decent results, I found I like couldn't do the pain on myself. Like I knew it was gonna hurt and I couldn't do it. <laughs> and then I still found out that there was like, there would still be hair. This I find that you can get it's not pain. I don't find this painful. Um, it can be if the hair I think is too long. So you kind of have to trim it if it's too long. Um, but I find that it gets the hair from the root. And like right now the hair's growing back. Like I can see obviously hair, but it's not as like blunt as it is with like a, like a razor. Like you can see the black. <laughs> that makes sense. I don't know. Um, I like this. It does have a learning curve. I'm still learning about it. Um, but it's only like, I think 30 to $40, if I remember correctly, I want to say it was 36, but I could be wrong on that. Um, which I think is cheaper than getting like professional waxing and sugaring. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's kind of uneven <laughs> for me cause I'm still working on it, but I think it's kind of fun and I, the owner seems really cute and nice. Um, and yeah, 
Oh, I find that this works better on my calves. I'm looking at my calves right now. My calves, my shins, calves, like the lower part of my leg. And I don't really use it on my thighs just because I, I find that razor on my thighs are fine. And I use it on my underarms. It's fun. I don't know if I'll do it like a whole video on this, but if you're interested in sugaring, here's a brand. Pick it up. <laughs> Okay, another thing that's not really skincare, but it's kind of in beauty are these, I have these two Lights Lacquer nail polishes in Marie and Lilac Wine. I really like these because these are not like a normal creme finish. They actually have like a gel, I think they're described as like a gel finish. And I don't know if you can tell, at least with this hand, this is what I'm talking about. Like it's sheer almost for both of these. And I really like that because it's, Whereas when it wears off, it's not as like, if you can tell here, like these two are wearing off, but this one kind of is, and I feel like you almost can't really tell it's wearing off. And I don't know, I just really like the finish of these and it kind of just, it looks very nice. I don't know. I like how they wear off because nail polish for me always wears off. If you have like a tip to f figure out a way to like dehydrate my nails, because I think they're just oily. That's why they always chip or peel. Please, please let me know because... I'm willing to try anything, but I think these are cute for light slacker. Did I say Marie and Lilac? What is this? A lilac Vine. Lilac Vine's like a lilac. This one is more like your nail, but better. I know that's like annoying, but yeah, this is like more of a pinky shade. Um, they're cute. Try them out. I love light slacker. I love their Instagram. I will be on there doing their little polls the whole day. Um, I have like most of my nail collection is lights lacquer. Maybe I've mentioned this. I don't know if I posted. I don't even remember what's been going on. But I've been trying to get back into reading. During the pandemic, I was super in that. We're still kind of in a pandemic, but I have been trying to get more into reading. I got into book talk, and so now I'm 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 in it. I'm in it. I bought books. I got everything. Um, what is the first book I want to talk about? Ooh. Have I talked about this book? I don't think I have. No. I think I filmed something, but I deleted it. Anyway, We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor Me K. Mejia? Mejia? Mejia. Mejia? Mm, I might be pronouncing it. I'm so sorry. Um, this was, like, recommended, like, a while ago by, like, BuzzFeed. They're pero, pero like, um, that subsect. Um... And I remember the concept of it was just like interesting to me. So it's about, so Daniela Vargas is a top student at Medio School for Girls where women are trying to be the perfect wives for like distinguished men. Um, and they're like split into two groups. So there's like the primera and then the segunda. So there's like the first wife has different um, roles and the segunda has like, I don't know, like, you know what I'm saying? It kind of has like a, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Handmaid's Tale kind of vibe to it, but it's not as, violent i've only watched the, the series don't hate me of the handmaid's tale but this concept of it i was like this is interesting and i read it and this like got me into it. like i'm gonna read books i haven't read the sequel yet i'm going to but i made um like a promise to myself that i would read books off my bookshelf because i bought this um this is really good i recommend what did i give this five out of five stars i think i really liked it i can see where some people wouldn't but i did i liked it I think it has three on Goodreads, and I'm like, three, and this is, I like this. Maybe it's just me. I think it's YA. I could be wrong on that. I don't know, but I liked it. Um, what, what are we going to do next? Okay, this is like old. Like, I know I'm late for the party. This is The Lovely Bones by Alice Sibold. Sibold? Sibold? I think I got this while I was like at a random Wisconsin museum that was also a bookstore with my dad. And the guy was just giving us books for like 25 cents and he was like this is better you got to read the book because it's better than the movie and i think I've, I've seen the movie before and i read this this is so good this is so ridiculously good i get the, this has been out since like 2002 but like this is this is this is good um and i don't know if i mentioned i was gonna i've had this for so long it's been on my bookshelf and i like when i was buying books i was like okay i gotta i'm not gonna buy any more books till i read a certain amount off the bookshelf so this was on that was on the bookshelf and I was like let me read this this is so good I cried multiple times out of like sadness happiness like I think four times while reading this it's so good and you can get it done in like a day it's like what 200 not 200 300 pages yeah super good highly recommend mm, what is next oh 
the Persepolis. I don't know if it's called the, the Complete Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi. Satrapi? Satrapi? Satrapi. Um, this is a graphic This is a graphic novel autobiography. Is that what, how would you would call it? Yes. So it's got pictures. Yay! <laughs> this is really good. Someone put this in like a TikTok of like books that have changed their lives and I was like ooh let me check this out because I like I like the idea that it was a graphic novel um this is really good um it gives let me tell you what it's about it's about a girl who's growing up in a revolutionary Iran 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 duh um during like the 70s during revolutionary Iran 70s and 80s um and so it chronicles like her young life of her like right when it happens and the changes and then you also see her she ends up going like abroad for a while and then comes back and like it's just interesting about like class and like what am I trying to say here it's just like an interesting look on like class in Iran because their family's not like I don't think they're in middle class I think they're a little upper class and they're very liberal so like how they're adjusting to the regime is also really interesting and like her back family a lot of her family members like went to jail and it's just really interesting I think you would enjoy this you also get like a look into her like older life as well and I don't it was interesting I really liked it it's very nicely I like I like it that's it okay okay the song of Achilles by Madeline Miller um I, I like this I don't like it I don't know if I liked it as much as it was hyped up to be. People feel like I, I cried during this. I got a little teary eyed, but I didn't cry like I did with some other books. Um, if you don't know, this is like a retelling of the Achilles and Patrocles, um, the myth when they go to the Trojan War, Achilles and Patrocles. In like the myth, it's like they're, I think they're lovers in the myth, but they're like super close and everything. I've, I think I've read, I don't know if I've read the Iliad or the Iliad has been. I think I've read the Iliad. I can't remember, but I knew how this ends. So like, <laughs> spoiler, it, it's a sad ending because <laughs> that's how it goes. I didn't really like Achilles. I think he's like a hard character to like, like Patrocles, we love him. Um, you know who deserves justice? Breeze, what's her name? Oh my God, wait, let me see. They have like the, Bresis, Brysis. Bresis or Brysis? I forgot, I don't remember her in the Iliad. And I think she had like a really minor role, justice for her. Um, I liked it because I did get like, mm, I, yeah, I liked it. I love a good Greek retelling. I love Greek mythology. Um, and I don't know if you have said this before, but I've, I've reread the Percy Jackson series and I'm currently reading Trials of Apollo right now. And so I like just wanted more of this. This is cute. I think I'll, I'll like Circe better, but I'm, I'm waiting, but let me know, did this like live up to your hype or is it like, did it live up to the hype? I don't know if it lived up to the hype all fully. I still enjoyed reading it. Like I wasn't mad about it or anything, but yeah. Reading the Trials of Apollo. I think it's what it's called, Trials of Apollo. They're over there, I'm not reaching over there. The first one, I'm gonna give a three. Second one, I'm also gonna give a three. The third one, the third one got interesting. The third one was, I, I would give a four. I hope it goes more in that direction because one and two I was just like let's wrap it up like we're it was there was a lot of action and I'm realizing I don't like action like I just I get bored um but yeah that is what I think of the series I'm gonna finish the series I don't know if it's worth rereading or worth reading if you've read the first mm, I'm just very blah about it but I did like that, th that third book the third book was pretty good what is the third book called? The Burning Maze. That's what it's called. Now, bum, 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 we're going to get into my, what's it, fails? I, it fails is such a strong word. Some of these aren't really fails. They're just like, eh, they're like eh to me. Okay. First things first, we got this concealer by Revolution, Revolution Makeup Conceal in Light Sand. I got this because, again, I have acne and... I thought this would like everyone's like oh when you want to cover up acne you want to use a cream based concealer over like one that's like in a liquid and a doe foot um but and I thought about getting the NARS one but I was like oh let me try this because this is ten dollars the NARS one's thirty 
Um, one, I don't know if I got the right shade, really. I couldn't test out shades while there. I got light sand. And maybe I should have gone with a medium, just because, like, it doesn't match my skin. So then I'm combining it with, like, a darker... Mm. And I find that, like, I don't have it on now, and I think my acne looks decent. Like, I can still see it, but whenever I have this on, I think it looks a little too chunky. Mm, so I'm gonna kind of eh about it. I don't know. If anyone's tried the NARS one, let me know if that one's, like, totally different. It's gonna change my life, because maybe I'll pick that one up. But I just find it's a little too chunky. This also has salicylic acid in it, and I'm like, I don't think that's doing anything. But, like... Yeah, I'm just like, eh, about this. I think I'll probably stop using it or I'll, I don't know. How much is in here? We'll, we'll figure it out, but mm, I was just, eh, about that. Another thing we have, we have the Ulta Beauty Pout, Plumped Out Pout Lip Gloss. This Nisa Pisa recommended, and I usually don't mind a plumping lip gloss, but this is a lot. This is too much, and I don't even really like the effect of it. I was gonna return it, but it was 10 bucks. So I'm just like, mm, I'm gonna keep it, but this, in, when, this hurts. I've tried it a couple times after because I tried this right right after I got into the car. I wanted to see how it looked. And then we ended up going somewhere where I had to put a mask back on and I wasn't feeling the effects of it. So then I was just like smeared onto my face and it burned. I was like, <laughs> like on my lips, like I was <laughs> not having a good time at TJ Maxx. So I've tried it a little, a couple other times. I might just give it away. I don't know. I'm, this just be warm. It really hurts. It does hurt. Okay, another thing I have is the Specifica SPF 45 Set and Protect Matte Sheer Set. Matte. I never realized that said matte. <laughs> sheer Setting Spray. I think I saw this on TikTok, like one of the ads, and I was like, oh, I've been looking for like a spray that you can spray on your face because I know Neutrogena has one, but I don't think you can, you're supposed to spray it directly on your face. And this one doesn't say anything about not spraying it directly on your face. So, I picked this up. This, I don't hate this. I don't find this matte at all. I'm surprised they say matte because usually my skin looks very wet when I put this on and a little too greasy and that's saying a lot because I, I don't mind looking like a little grease ball sometimes. Um, but this has a smell, which is really bad. Like it's not, mm, it's not good. It's not good. Mm, I just smelled it right now. So when I have to put it on, I have to like not breathe for a little bit. So I don't think that like, if you got it on sale, like this is only eight bucks. So I'm not like terribly mad about it. And you're looking for something to set your, like to just reapply over makeup, maybe get this, but I think you might just like getting one of these. This is a lot cheaper though. So I do like maybe try this. If you hate it, then you've lost eight bucks but not a huge deal you know, depends 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 um what do we have next oh books mm, do i want to mention anything else no okay books i don't know if this is ariadne or ariadne um by jennifer saint again this is another greek retelling and it didn't it wasn't if you don't know the myth of ariadne it's she is the daughter of King Minos. She, Minos has this policy where like these Athenians have to come, seven Athenians have to come to their palace and are chased around and killed by this Minotaur that he has in the basement in the labyrinth. Um, Theseus, or no, Ariadne ha helps Theseus, who is one of the Athenians that comes by, he's an, a prince, helps him get through the maze. Some uh, reports vary. Um, they go on an island and she gets abandoned on the island. Again, if he just randomly abandoned her or if she was like cursed by Artemis. Again, the myth is like all over the place. She's end up, spoiler alert, she's rescued by Dionysus and becomes his immortal wife. You do. So I was expecting that myth um, of like, oh, there's like a tragic breakup and then there's like, oh, Dionysus comes in and we're gonna have a romance. I wanted, I was, was thinking this was romance. And while I do like the, um, the uh, like retelling the story from like her perspective, cause you don't get that in Greek myths and I'm all for retelling Greek myths with a female perspective. This was just not like, I could, like I read through it, like you can read through it. And if I think if, like some people really love this book. I just, I got to the end 
and it wasn't the ending I wanted because I guess there's a whole other myth that I didn't know about my bad on that one and I just wasn't I was just so disappointed and like I got like the ending of this is just not that good so I, I gave it two out of five stars oopsies but yeah bum 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 all right we have another one <laughs> The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho, by Coelho, 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 I'm not sure. It's by Brazil, he, I know he's Brazilian because they mentioned that. Uh, I got this as a gift and I feel bad because I had a heart, I could barely, this was one of the books that was like on my bookshelf and I'm like, okay, I'll read two books and then I'll buy books. And I almost feel guilty about, I could barely get through this, like I was just wasn't, interested i think it has like a philosophical message to it that i just was not really getting it's about this shepherd and he's looking for treasure and i was like mm, moving on i wasn't seeing the point i feel like by the end i was skimming it was only 120 pages but even i had a hard time getting through this um and i feel bad even putting it on my list of two books i read because i feel like i barely read this like maybe i'll read it when I'm in a different mindset, I'm just not into it. Um, what else was I gonna say about this? I found <laughs> the prologue more interest. No, the foreword more interesting than the actual book. Um, I guess this is like has a lot of acclaim. Like Madonna and Will Smith have like talked about how much they love this book, and a bunch of other celebrities. I'm just. I wasn't impressed. I'm gonna give it one star. I know that's I know that's mean, but I just I couldn't get into it. It might just be me. Other people could probably love this book. I think it's loved, beloved. Um, I want to read romance. I'm like over sadness and academia. Yeah, <laughs> which is what I want. I wanted. You know what I'm saying. So that's all I got for right now. I hopefully this video didn't go too long. It probably did, but who cares? Um, hopefully this got filmed correctly. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you tried any of this read, tried, have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye!